The owner of the garden of evil wants to assure you that the one thing he has never done in his garden of evil is discuss Supreme Court opinions with Clarence Thomas, who is his best friend. Harlan Crow and Clarence Thomas have not used the term best friend to describe one another, but how could Clarence Thomas ever have a better friend? Texas billionaire Harlan Crow, who calls his backyard the Garden of Evil, because it is populated with statues of some of the most evil men in history, has allowed Clarence Thomas to live more of the life of a billionaire than any of us ever will. The trips on the private jets, the trips on the yacht. And Harlan Crow has pumped money directly into the joint income of Clarence Thomas and his wife. Harlan Crow contributed more than enough money to fully fund Virginia Thomas's salary at one of the places she once worked. And Harlan Crow allows Clarence Thomas's mother to live rent free in a house that Harlan Crow bought from Clarence Thomas, putting some of the purchase price of that house directly into Clarence Thomas's pocket. Harlan Crow then fixed up the house. And now Clarence Thomas's mother is living at no expense at all to Clarence Thomas, all thanks to the best friend a Supreme Court justice could ever have, as long as that justice does not mind being <clears throat> exposed as the most corrupt Supreme Court justice the court has ever had. If there has been a more corrupt Supreme Court justice than Clarence Thomas, then that corruption has remained secret. No such corruption has ever been made public. In an interview with The Atlantic, published today, Harlan Crow expresses astonishment that anyone could ever be concerned about the integrity of Clarence Thomas. I have never, nor would I ever, think about talking about matters that relate to the judiciary with Justice Clarence Thomas Crow said. He told The Atlantic they talk about things like the weather and sports and then decided to amend that after the interview in an email saying, quote, it is not realistic for two people to be friends and not talk about their jobs from time to time. Thomas has spoken to him of his fondness for his clerks or about bumping into Justice Stephen Breyer at Target. But Crow wrote that it would be wrong for him to talk about court cases. From my point of view, that is off limits. He and I don't go there. And so if you're comfortable taking Texas billionaire Harlan Crow's word for it, there's nothing to be worried about. But it is hard to be comfortable with anything that Harlan Crow says, including, quote, the kids used to be scared of them. That's what he said about the statues in his Garden of Evil, which include Lenin and Stalin and other dictators from around the world, dead dictators. What manner of man puts statues of evildoers in his garden and then enjoys them? What kind of father leaves them there knowing that his kids are scared by them? Wandering around the Garden of Evil, Harlan Crow told his Atlantic interviewer, quote, I'm not looking to be odd. Well, he has failed miserably. The Atlantic makes the mistake of printing the line, he feels he has acted with the purest and most honorable intentions. No one at the Atlantic knows what Harlan Crow feels. But this is exactly the kind of misconception that access journalism always produces. You will see that kind of reporting in the New York Times and everywhere that access journalism is practiced. The journalistically correct way to deliver that line would be to say he claims he has acted with the purest and most honorable intentions. That leaves open the possibility that he did act with the purest and most honorable intentions, and it leaves open the possibility that he didn't. But The Atlantic has decided to remove your option as a reader and present to you as a fact that The Atlantic knows what Harlan Crow feels. The more you know about him, the more impossible it is to know what he feels. 
What would you feel holding Hitler's teapot in your hand? Could you do it? If you were in a room and were told that was Hitler's teapot, would you touch it? Would you want to? Would your fingers be drawn to the handle of that teapot that brought comfort to Adolf Hitler while he was exterminating six million Jews in his death camps? What would it feel like to touch that handle if you dared? Harlan Crow knows he owns the teapot. He claims it's important that such things be preserved, but do they need to be preserved in his home? Couldn't he, after paying a billionaire's ransom for Hitler's teapot and pictures painted by Hitler and Hitler's table linens, couldn't Harlan Crow donate them to the appropriate archive of such material? Why own them? Why have them in your home? Why sleep under the same roof with Hitler's possessions, things Hitler touched? Can the Atlantic tell us what Harlan Crow feels when his hand grips Hitler's teapot? Can the Atlantic tell us what Harlan Crow feels when he falls asleep in a house where he knows Hitler's paintings are peacefully residing with him? Harlan Crow decided to take Hitler's paintings out of their normal display position when he was doing a fundraiser for failed presidential candidate Marco Rubio in 2015. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz complained then publicly that Marco Rubio was going into a home with Hitler's paintings for a fundraiser. So only in 2015 did it occur to Harlan Crow that maybe Hitler's paintings shouldn't be on prominent public display in his home. Now the biggest, most prominent painting on display in his home is a portrait of his best friend, Clarence Thomas, which seems hardly controversial at all when the alternative would be having Hitler's paintings hanging there instead. Harlan Crow owns a copy of Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, signed by Adolf Hitler. So when Harlan Crow is holding Hitler's book in his hands, he knows that Hitler himself held this particular copy of this book in his hands. I think I might feel as if my hands were on fire if I were forced to touch that book. How does Harlan Crow feel when he holds Hitler's book signed by Hitler? We don't know. The Atlantic doesn't know. Harlan Crow tells The Atlantic, it's kind of weird to think that if you're a justice on the Supreme Court, you can't have friends. Of course you can have friends if you're on the Supreme Court. They all have friends. That's not the issue. But it is entirely possible that Harlan Crow is not intelligent enough to actually see what the real issue is. Harlan Crow was not asked if he thinks there's the slightest chance that he would have befriended Clarence Thomas if Clarence Thomas were not a Supreme Court justice. Harlan Crow went out of his way to meet Clarence Thomas by giving him a ride on his private jet in the fourth year of Clarence Thomas's service on the Supreme Court. He says they have discovered we share a love of Motown. Harlan Crow complains to the Atlantic, if I go out and help an old lady across the street this afternoon, there'll be something written about my diabolical purpose and evil intent. Has he ever helped an old lady across the street? Would he help her across the street if she were not a Supreme Court justice? Despite his attempts to appear normal and sound normal, Harlan Crow is indeed somewhere far beyond odd. About the Hitler paintings and Hitler possessions in his home, Harlan Crow told The Atlantic, the idea that I might offend somebody, particularly somebody I care about, one of my friends with this stuff, that hurts. I would never want to do that. Harlan Crow was not asked if he has any Jewish friends. Did he think Debbie Wasserman Schultz was kidding? 
when she publicly expressed her offense that Harlan Crow gave Hitler's paintings and his teapot a happy home? Harlan Crow was born in Texas in 1947. He was educated in the Deep South at the height of the civil rights movement. How did he feel about that? The Atlantic doesn't know, and the Atlantic didn't ask. He went to college in Atlanta while Martin Luther King was preaching to his Atlanta congregation across town. Martin Luther King Jr. was the most famous person living in Atlanta when Harlan Crow went to college there. What did Harlan Crow think about Martin Luther King? The Atlantic did not ask. One of Harlan Crow's neighbors is Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. Here is Jerry Jones in Little Rock, Arkansas, when President Eisenhower used the American military to force the integration of a public high school there. Jerry Jones was among the protesters. Jerry Jones was there to protest integration and cheer on and try to maintain segregation. What was Harlan Crow doing that day? What was he feeling as the whole country watched that horrible display of racism in Little Rock, Arkansas that day? The whole country was watching. Has Harlan Crow ever talked to his neighbor, Jerry Jones, about that day? There are no segregationists in Harlan Crow's Garden of Evil. There are no American slave owners in Harlan Crow's Garden of Evil. Harlan Crow claims to abhor Donald Trump, but there is no Trump statue in the Garden of Evil.